Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Invest Dream US India. I hope you were able to take some time off during the holidays. And now we're going to jump into our fourth episode, the first of the year. I'm Pankaj. And I'm Herji. So, standard disclaimer, nothing in this podcast is meant to be investment, financial, or tax advice. Please consult your financial advisor, accountant, or lawyer for any investment, tax, or legal advice. Today, we're going to discuss early stage funding totals in India in 2018, some financials related to Uber's operations in India, internet user growth in India, and wrap it up with a few thoughts about the 800 pound bear in the room, Apple. India has seen a record $10.5 billion go into startups in 2018. However, Early stage startups participated in 304 deals in 2018 and raised only $916 million in funds, according to data from research firm Venture Intelligence. Now, this is a substantial decline from the $988 million they raised from 380 rounds in 2017 and the $1.01 billion uh, in 430 deals uh, in 2016. Uh, there's a lot of things that could attribute to that, you know, primarily. Large sums of money have been going into mega rounds and large unicorns uh, have been raising more money. So total more money has gone in to the sector, but early stage companies have been getting less capital. Uh, you know, it's also possible that angels have uh, decreased the amount of money that they're putting in in each round. More angels are putting money in for sure, but f- there could be fewer um, dollars that they're putting in on each round. So. Uh, overall, you know, it, it's, it's a positive, but, you know, something to keep an eye on uh, at the early stage, right? Absolutely, but I, I, I'm pitched in since 2000, you know, in 2016 from 430 deals and now in 2018 to 304 deals, I think that's a sharp decline uh, since 2016 in number of deals, but in terms of dollar value, well, I, I think you and I both agree that in, uh, the rounds have been a bit higher than uh, those days. Yeah, yeah. No, the rounds are definitely higher. Um, you know, valuations have definitely risen. No question about it. What I've also seen is that companies have gone from the seed round to a Series A round much more quickly than they had in the past. Uh, the top companies, at least. So you know, there the, there's some interesting dynamics happening here. Where you know, I think the uh, Flipkart acquisition, the creation of multiple new unicorns in 2018, including Baiju's, who we talked about a few weeks ago. Uh, you know, all of these things have moved money to the later stage of the market. And, you know, there's still a lot of deals being done at the early stage. You know, that's something that we, we, we want to talk about. And perhaps on another episode, we'll get uh, some early stage investors to join us and talk to us a little bit about what they're seeing. At the... Next up is Uber. You know, a few weeks ago, we talked about their uh, announcement uh, about their IPO and the lofty valuation that they were seeking. Uh, recently, we got a glimpse into the financials of Uber India. You know, the, you know, a couple of blog posts, and uh, I think it was ET covered this. Um, you know, for the fiscal year ending March thirty first, twenty eighteen, Uber's uh, Uber India's revenue spiked twenty one x to approximately three million dollars or twenty crores, um, and the profit in India for the fiscal year was around uh, thirty thousand dollars or twenty lakhs. Uh, based on today's exchange rate or or a recent exchange rate. $3 million was their total revenue uh, in 2018, or at least for that fiscal year. I was shocked when I saw $3 million as the total revenue. You know, of course, that's that's not the... It's just shocking because I can't believe that number, meaning it's hard to believe. I thought we had made an error when we put that number into, into our pitch, so I'm kind of blown away that where is all that money going to? Yeah. To contrast these numbers with Ola Cabs, uh, you know, Uber India's biggest competitor, in 2017, Ola reported revenue of approximately $178 million. Uh, Uber's got a long road ahead competing with Ola, um, and that too, not just in India. Ola has taken the fight outside of India to Australia and the UK as well. They're back to their financials. Their gross booking rate was over $1.6 billion during the fiscal year, which accounts for over 10% of global operations. So, you know, their total booking rates are huge. They, you know, $1.6 billion is a lot of money. They, they're they doing very well. You know, the, if I break this down, the revenue and profit numbers are impossible to take seriously, but they're insignificant um, you know, for a company that's looking at a valuation of $60 billion right now, right now and looking at IPO at $120 billion. 
But you know, if we look at the gross booking number of 1.6 billion, then the revenue is less than 0.2% of gross booking value, right? So there's a this implies that Uber is continuing to subsidize rides, give a much larger cut to the drivers, which is it's a net positive, right? Um, and hence, there's a lot of room for Uber to eke out better margins over time. Uh, of course, knowing how things go in India, they will likely see protests from drivers and uh, passengers once prices start going up and, you know, the cut, the drivers are getting decreases. I can't wait to see their filings for the fiscal year 2019, which ends on March 31st of this year. You're in India right now, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, what you're seeing. So, I th I see, I take Uber all the time. Yeah. Right? This is, so, first of all, it's hard to take that 30,000 number too seriously, I think. Uh, Uber, I, I, I don't think Uber will be able to compete against Ola from a domestic. I think, in my opinion, it will be a similar transaction to see what they did with Diddy to grow here strategically with and with the help of uh, talking up with Ola. But what are your thoughts? I think that's what I think. But what, what, what do you think is going to happen in that business? Well, you know, I, I think Uber's given Ola a huge run for their money and, you know, a $1.6 billion gross booking rate it makes a lot of sense. Now, I didn't dive into Ola's numbers for 2017, so I'm not sure about that, you know, that, uh, what was it, 178 million revenue number. Is that top line? Does that include gross bookings? I'm not 100% sure, so I don't want to say that it does or doesn't. But, you know, if I look at the 1.6 billion that uh, Uber's booking, that's, that's, that's impressive. That's not uh, a small amount for um, you know, uh, taxis across India. And if, if you think about it, the, the number of um, people that are signed up on both platforms, number of drivers that are signed up on black, both platforms uh, has increased. I don't know about recently, but in, in the past, you know, people would sign up for every one of these ride sharing apps and whichever one was giving them the best uh, rate is the one that they would use, right? Uh, both on the driver side and on the passenger side. My experience uh, with Uber has generally been positive, and I think you know people will continue to uh, to use Uber, and I think Uber's got a better chance of succeeding in India that they have than they have had in China. So, I, I, I was thinking more from a concept point of view. You know, all the rides in India, you take Uber, all uh, it, it's probably that or most of my rides they last more than thirty minutes because it's a congested country, yeah. and I think there's a lot of traffic. But I think them having in-screen, in-cab in, in entertainment, I kind of like that feature. So whenever I'm traveling you know, 30 minutes plus, I always take all of because they have that table, uh, tablet, you put the news on, yeah. you, uh, you, put, you put something else on from that feature perspective. Yeah. I kind of like Ola. Uh, but Uber, I, 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 you know, I, I, I think they have huge deep pockets. They definitely gave, uh, gave uh, Ola one for his money. Yeah. But I, I, I still can't see the, mod, the number they put up in 2018 in the statement. You know, I, should we take that seriously? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Internet user growth in India has exploded. Um, there are now over 500 million internet users in India. Uh, of course, India is uh, the second largest internet market in the world now behind China. Um, and the user growth has been pretty significant over the last two years, which coincidentally aligns with the launch of Reliance's Geo Network across the country. Uh, the last couple of months, Geo has been adding users faster than other telcos in India. Geo has changed the way phone calls, roaming, and data are priced across the country, and uh, they've made incumbent leaders like Airtel and Vodafone rethink their offerings, and in some cases, lower their prices as well to compete. Um, you know, I, I can't really say that the service quality has improved uh, for companies like Airtel and Vodafone. If you go on Twitter, you'll see a lot of uh, people complaining about Airtel and Vodafone. I haven't really looked at Twitter and people complaining about Geo, so I don't really want to say that one is worse than the other, at least on Twitter. That being said, only 40% of the Indian population is online right now. Uh, hence, I think there's a lot of room for growth. Um, you know, the, in the U.S., we had about 40% of the population online in 2005, right? And if we look at how things have changed over the last 13, 14 years uh, in the U.S. and the number of people that have come online, the type of uh, businesses that have been created over the last 15 years, right? Like Spotify didn't exist 15 years ago. Uber didn't exist 15 years ago. Uh, the 
iPhone didn't exist 15 years ago. No Android phones existed 15 years ago. You know, if we just look at all of these things, they were all enabled after we saw this massive growth in internet population within the country. And you know, when I when I look at this 40% number, I, I don't know when China uh, hit 40%. The number of massive internet companies that have been created out of China has really been in the last eight to 10 years. Uh, prior to that, no one was talking about Tencent or uh, Alibaba, right? Uh, all these guys were talking about Baidu because it was listed on the New York Stock Exchange, but no one was really talking about Alibaba and Tencent 10 years ago. Uh, so I think this 40% number is an important number to keep track of and now see like what, what are we going to see over the next 10 years uh, out of India? Internet companies, um, internet usage, uh, mobile banking, uh, you know, fintech companies are raising money left and right. They're doing amazing things, you know, with India's UPI uh, initiative that has really changed the way payments are made across the country. It's really quick and easy and cheap uh, to, to pay somebody now. Um, so, you know, I, I just think it's a fascinating uh, number to, to keep in mind. 500 million users is a lot of users. Uh, India, of course, has the lowest data and phone rates in the world. Um, so, you know, it's going to be interesting to keep track of that market. And I think this is a really bullish signal for, you know, startups over the next 10 years and what they're going to be able to do in India. Absolutely. I think the number to watch out for it, 50% of India's population is under the age of 33. Yeah. I think that's it. Statistics. And if you look at that's almost, you know, 650 million people, right? So if we oh. just wait for that number, I think that's going to keep on going up in terms of India, in terms of population, it's not going to slow down. Secondly, we, if you look at the, the NGOs, the type of work they're doing, that internet is going to remote villages. So I it's, see bandwidth is still a challenge for this country. I think uh, India has nothing but, you know, corporate in that sector. Yeah. So I think numbers are going to continue to go up. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. Um, let's 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 hope for the best and let's watch this closely. No, this is this is definitely internet growth is definitely is going to I think uh, amplify India and, and new businesses in India. Yeah. All right. What so you have, what do you have for uh, what what's going to, what's happening with Apple? <laughs> what's what's not happening with Apple? Um, okay. You know. It's the 800-pound bear in the room, right? Like the last couple of weeks, uh, December has been a brutal month for Apple. Uh, the stock has dropped from a high of 232 on October 3rd to a low of 142 on January 3rd. Uh, last couple of days have been good for Apple or the U.S. stock market in general. Um, you know, and I, my view on that is just, you know, people... Uh, do a lot of tax uh, loss har harvesting in December. So people are selling uh, a lot of stocks in December to kind of book their losses for the year and, you know, pay less in taxes potentially. Uh, and then beginning of January, people start buying back in. So that kind of bumps uh, prices back up. Uh, hopefully this is sustainable and we'll start seeing, you know, the market stabilize and moving back up. But, you know, er everyone's been talking about Apple's letter uh, a, couple of days, uh, a couple of days ago or last week. Uh, how it pretends is a global slowdown and how Apple is no longer innovating. You know, all these things may be true. They may not be true. I don't know. But the stock market definitely, you know, taking a hatchet out to Apple. Um, it's trading at a ridiculous PE of under 12. Um, what's interesting is newer products like the 2018 iPad Pro show Apple is continuing to evolve as a company, but more importantly, the company is evolving our view of the future. You know, I've been a Unix and Linux and Mac user for a very long time. Um, I can't, I, I couldn't take a trip without bringing my MacBook Air or my MacBook Pro uh, along with me, even if it was just for a weekend. Um, recently, I picked up the new iPad Pro in November, and I have moved almost all of my workflow onto the new iPad. Uh, there are a lot of reviews out there of their iPad, so I'm not looking to review the product. I haven't felt the need for external storage yet. The cloud services between iCloud and Dropbox, uh, it's, it's worked wonderfully. And I think as people you know, begin this transition, I think we're likely to see more of Apple's revenue distribute evenly between devices other than the iPhone and also increasingly to services. You know, a lot of people have been talking about how their services uh, revenue has increased substantially um, in 2018. But, you know, Apple does need to get their services on par with those from Google and Amazon. 
And I think we're looking at another two to three years before we see a significant shift in that revenue. Uh, what's also interesting is just you know a couple of days ago at CES, Apple announced that they're going to bring all of their iTunes content libraries and uh, support for AirPlay directly onto Samsung screens. So Samsung TVs produced in 2018 and 2019 will natively allow you to view your iTunes purchased music, uh, music movies and uh, television shows uh, directly on the TV without buying an Apple TV or without having to hook up your phone or your laptop or your iPad. So I think that's a huge move and I think that's, it's interesting to see that Apple has changed the way that they're thinking about distribution of their content. The other thing is with their massive war chest in, in the hundreds of billions, they may be able to move a bit quicker, but uh, you know, bottleneck is always people. Finding the right people that can rapidly roll out new products and innovate on existing ones, both hardware and software, is going to be a real test of Apple's management. It's also going to continue to be being a problem for Apple to continue betting on China so heavily. There are other large, though more price-sensitive markets where Apple has started paying more attention to, but unfortunately has seen the market go to lower cost hardware and software solutions, right? Like India, right? You've seen Android really take over in India because the iPhones are just too expensive. So I agree with you. I think iPhone is definitely too expensive for the Indian markets, but also I think there's a couple of factors to consider. Look, there's a U.S.-China trade war that is going on. At the same time, the U.S. equity market is, is as a whole uh, is trading low, right? And it's, it's a south button. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, falling from $230 to trading at you know, almost, you're, you're looking at a decline of 33% of the company's stock, right? So that is it. That is it. I, th I think that is something to be concerned about if you're an investor. But, what you know, if, it, if it's Warren Buffett, when something is low as Apple, you buy it, right? You buy more, uh, hoping uh, that company, because they have a good, uh, good business plan, you're addicted to their products. And I still think Apple has one of the best products in the market compared to what you see out there. Yeah, and like you said, right, like when when other people are scared, be bold, right? Anyone who's been holding Apple stock over the last three months is feeling a lot of pain. Um, but, you know, I'm not talking about trading, but if you're looking as, at a long-term investment, um, you know, Apple's got some good products in the pipeline. They may not be the most innovative products. Apple's definitely fallen behind uh, uh, Amazon and Google on the voice assistant side of it. But, you know, I think Siri's, the HomePod is, is a pretty good device. I have one. I use it fairly regularly. You can do some good things with it. And in some cases, I think it's actually better than Alexa. Um, you know, I'm still, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, there's certain things I'll ask Alexa and Alexa will just say, I can't do that yet. And I'll ask Siri and it'll do it. So like, you know, for example, where we were going somewhere one day and my wife asked Alexa, you know, how, how long is it going to take to get there? And Alexa said, I can't do that. I asked HomePod, uh, you know, how long is it going to take to get there? And within a few seconds, I had an answer and it was pretty accurate. I was, you know, probably a five minute margin of difference, uh, in when we actually got on the road. So, um, I actually like HomePod for certain things, and I think Alexa's good for other things. I'm really betting on the iPad. You know, I think the iPad uh, really took off when it was launched, and then it kind of saw this lull, and people just kind of started writing it off. Um, but I think the new iPads have really kind of changed that. They're pricey, though. That's the thing, right? Apple's products have just continued to become more and more expensive, at least at the top of the line products. So, you know, it's something to, to keep an eye on. I think it's, um, you know, I, I, I think the company is a great company. They have great products. And there's going to be a lot of uh, interesting things that they're going to be building over the next couple of years, especially if they're taking a very open approach, which we're starting to see a little glimmer of now, right? So if they're going to allow people to start integrating into their products without having to sell Apple hardware, uh, how is that going to affect the stock? And how is that going to affect people, you know, uh, buying Apple products and not just hardware products, software products, right? With their new, their own uh, production studio now, they're going to launch their own television shows, perhaps their own movies. Uh, that's content which you will be able to buy on your Samsung TV without having to own an Apple product. You know, you don't need an Apple TV. You don't need an Apple uh, phone. You can just buy it right from your Samsung TV. So I think that'll be interesting. No, that is 
very, very interesting. As we move on, I think content is king. And I think both Amazon and Netflix and obviously Apple, uh, they're in it for a long day. Basically, do have the infrastructure in place and a uh, you know, number of users using iPhone, I, iPad, and other, device, other Apple devices. So I think they have the right platform uh, to build uh, content for the global audience. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. That's all we've got for this week. Uh, again, happy 2019. And you know, please share your comments in the section below or on Twitter. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And uh, definitely feel free to reach out to both Harjit and I on Twitter. I'm P. Jane on Twitter. And thanks again for watching. We are ready for 2019, are you? We would love to hear from you. You can connect me with me on Twitter at Harjit. Thank you.